Today we'll be making a Chinese lantern step-by-step -step in Blender 4.0. Now this is a tutorial I wanted to do yesterday. I didn't get around to it for a lot of different reasons. So today I'm gonna to be doing it. We'll be making a Chinese lantern in a Blender. A ton of fun. And you can see this is the final result and um, very simple modeling techniques. I'll be uploading my final result to Patreon as well. All of that's in the description. And by the way, if you wanna use Skillshare for free for one month, I also have a link in the description that can allow you to do that. And you can cancel anytime you want. I've got a lot of cool Blender courses on my own page as well. So all of that's in the description, check it out. But for now, let's jump in and make this awesome looking Chinese lantern. So let's start by selecting all the default objects. I'm gonna just press delete on my keyboard. And I think a good starting point would be a sphere. So let's go shift A, let's go to our measure options and let's add in a UV sphere. And with this UV sphere, we're gonna tab into edit mode and we're gonna go S, Z and flatten it just a little bit. Okay, well, obviously you don't wanna to go too flat. We just kind of want this lantern sort of basket look like this. And we're gonna select this vertex at the top and just press delete and obviously just the one at the bottom here. So now we have a good starting base. So let's go to our edge select option over here. Let's go to our top view and we're gonna start with the straight edge here. So not one of these that's at an angle. You can see it lines up with the green line here. And we're gonna go shift alt and holding that in, we're gonna click and then we're gonna skip one and we're gonna click. We're gonna skip an edge and click and you can just keep going like this all the way around just selecting every second one like this all the way around till we get back to here. So you can see we've selected every second one of them like this. Then you can go control B or command B. That's gonna create a bevel. So we're gonna go about this much and then just click. And then if it's still active, you're gonna go shift D to duplicate, right click, and then go P and go separate selections. So now that's its own object. So if we tab back out into object mode, we can see this is its own object over here. But let's grab the sphere again, tab into edit mode. And this time, um, we're gonna go to our top view. And we're gonna go with our edge select again. This time we're gonna start over here. So we're gonna move one over and we're gonna hold in shift and alt. And now we're gonna select every second one going around this way, like this. Okay, going all the way around. All I'm doing is holding in shift and alt. That's it all the way around till we get over here. So now I've selected every second one the other way. And now we're gonna go Alt and S and scale it in along its normals, like so. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna let go of everything, Shift, Alt and left click on this edge and then go S, Z, zero, and then go G, Z and just move it up a bit. And then let's just grab this edge here at the bottom, Shift, and Alt, left click, and then go S, Z, zero, and then bring that guy down just a bit as well. Now we're gonna tab back out for a second. Let's grab that other object, we, um, the second duplication we created earlier. Let's tab into edit mode and go A to select everything. E to extrude, right click, and then go Alt, S, and just scale it out along with normals. Now it has some thickness. And then let's go to our modifiers, add modifier, and let's go sub and get a subdivision surface. Let's go to our vertex select option, go into wireframe and in our top view, we're just gonna press C to get our selection tool and grow it by rolling our middle mouse button. Let's just select all of these like so. And let's go shift E and create a bevel weight so that the subdivision surface doesn't mess it up towards the end. Otherwise it would be really stretched out like this. Okay, so now we're gonna tab back out. Now we have these reads and in object mode, we're gonna select everything, right click and go shade smooth. And um, if you wanted to, you can grab this lantern and go add modifier and go sub and give that a subdivision surface as well. But I don't really think it's too necessary by the looks of things, but you can do it if you want. Then we can go shift A. Let's quickly add in a circle. G, Z, move it up. S to scale that guy down. And let's just place him right here at the top like so. Tab into edit mode and I think with vertex select here, we're gonna go E to extrude and S, scale it in like so. A to select the whole thing. E to extrude and Z and let's bring it up like so. And you could probably move the whole thing down a bit like that. And then let's go to our vertex select options, shift and alt, let's just select these edges running along here. Control B to create a bevel. 
roll the middle mouse button once to add in a segment and that's it. Now let's select this edge, shift alt, left click to select this edge, shift D to duplicate, E to extrude and Z, bring it up about this much and then E to extrude as to scale and then E to extrude and Z and then E to extrude and Z to bring it down. And we don't really, you don't have to model this inside bit because you're probably not going to be looking into there with the camera. So let's just maybe select this edge over here and go control B just to create a bevel. And maybe this guy in here as well. And that's about it. Then let's go shift alt, left click on this edge, shift D to duplicate as to scale, make it nice and small, and then just go E to extrude and Z. And now extruding that up, now that's the thing where it hangs from. And if you want to, you can kind of bring that more down. But once again, you could add some spokes in here if you think your camera is going to be seen from the top, but it's unlikely in most shots. You'll probably be seeing it down like this. Okay. Um, so one more thing I'm going to do before we go too far is I'm just going to tab back out. I'm going to press A to select everything. And let's go into edit mode at the same time. And this is a neat little trick that you can do in Blender. Um, let's just go to the top. Let's just select all of this. And I want to make... This so I'm just going to go... S, Shift, and Z. So S, Shift, and Z, and scale everything out along the X and the Y only. And that excludes the Z. Now we've made that hole a bit bigger. I think that looks good. So I'm just gonna select this, right click and go Shade Smooth. And then now we're just gonna grab this guy over here. Let's just select the vertex on this bottom bit, Control L. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and bring it all the way down on the Z. And let's just move it up in here, like that at the bottom. And now we have that. So now we have our lantern pretty much done. Let's select this thing over here. Let's go to our renders, make it cycles. I'm gonna make it GPU. Only do that obviously if you have a GPU. And under your render samples, I'd say the max samples to 50 should be more than enough, especially with denoising. And let's go Shift A in our front, add in a quick camera there we go and you know obviously be as creative as you want with posing um, let's go something like that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift a let's quickly add in an area light move it to the side and just rotate it here like this and now if we go Z and we go rendered let's bump up that strength to 400 maybe on that light Scale it a little bit. Be as creative as you want with the lighting. The idea here is just to have some lights set up with a camera. And then let's select this top bit. And I like to go to my materials, go new. This is called this brass. And we're gonna make it kind of like a greenish yellow color. And then go to our metallic here, drag that value all the way up and let's bring that roughness down just a tad bit. Something like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 should be fine. Then let's select these ribs. Let's go to the drop down, give them the same brass material. Then let's click on our lantern, go new, and let's just call it cloth. Let's just go to our base color and make it kind of red. And what we can do to add a bit more realism is go to the subsurface and give it a weight of 0.57. And then, um, yeah, maybe I'll make this a little bit less saturated on the red. And I guess the weight, earlier when I did this, the weight of 5.7 worked, but I might take it up to 1. I think, I think to really see the effect, obviously, you have to have some sort of environmental lighting. Um, so I'll just quickly go to my um, render settings. I'm just going to go to Film, Enable Transparent as a start. Then I'm going to go to my world. Go to the color here. You could add in just a default sky texture. Uh, for me, I'm just going to use a HDRI image that I have. And, you know, that's looking kind of good with that environmental lighting. But there's one more thing I forgot. Let's just quickly go Shift A, add in a circle. Let's just go to our add circle settings here. Let's give it 64 on the count here. Let's just go G, Z, bring it down, S to scale it. Just at the bottom here, like so. And then to just tab into edit mode, go to your edge select. With everything active, go F3 and type in checker and go checker deselect. And then go E to extrude and Z and extrude down a tiny bit and then go shift R, hold that in and it'll all just repeat. And then grab one of these, go to your proportional editing, make it random and then go G, Z, try and move it up. And yes, it's going to look really messy like that, but don't worry about it. Let's turn this off. A to select everything. Let's go to our smooth tool and let's just smooth that out. 
And now we've got these randomized shreds of ribbon and we can tab out and let's give them that same cloth material like that. Make sure to save, of course. And that's it. Let's give this a nice test render and see what it looks like. And here we have the final result. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this Blender tutorial. Sorry I couldn't get to it yesterday. It would have been a lot more appropriate, but I think it has been fun. I've enjoyed making this and I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. And as always, I'll be uploading this to my Patreon.